Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled T-38s have been crashing from circling approaches for 50 plus years, and here is why. Now, I was a T-37 instructor. I'd flown the T-38 as a, a student pilot, and circling approaches were something we could do, but we typically didn't have much opportunity to do them, and really there wasn't much attention given to them. It was just, hey, it's another way to shoot an approach, and we shot lots of various approaches. Mostly, they were uh, high-tech and straight-in approaches, ILS approaches, and things like that. But on my way out to Edwards, they said, hey, we need somebody to teach the instrument ground school. And uh, to do that, you have to go through the uh, Air Force Instrument Flight Center uh, and become an instrument pilot instructor uh, graduate to teach this course. And they said, would you like to do that? And I go, sure, that sounds like fun. So um, this was done out of San Antonio and we flew T-38s and we flew a bunch of uh, approaches. Part of it was teaching uh, the ground school, but also to have a broadened experience in uh, various type approaches that could be flown. Now, the T-38 is a Category E aircraft. That's a very fast aircraft as far as circling approaches, so you need a lot higher turn radius. Now, there are not a lot of Category E circling approaches uh, available. What we did was, since it was VFR, we kind of um, uh, made up circling approaches. We said, okay, this would be um, the criteria for circling approach, you'd be down anywhere from six to 700 feet above the ground, which is half of the normal pattern altitude of 1,500 feet. And we'll pretend we're down there low and we're doing a circling approach. And because it's a totally different uh, picture, it was really an eye-opening experience. Now let's talk about aircraft approach categories. Now for my Cessna 310, I'm down there less than 90 knots. That's category A. A little faster aircraft, um, category B, and my 310, depending on conditions, could be up there, but typically not. Uh, airliners are B and C type category. Uh, fighters can be up there category D. The T-38 uh, was a category E aircraft because of its very high approach speed. Now, it's fairly obvious. The higher the approach speed, the greater the turn radius you need to make a 180 degree turn. Now, not all circling approaches are 180 degrees. What, what will make an approach uh, required to have circling approach criteria is if the, uh, the uh, runway alignment is more than 30 degrees off. So you see it's coming in, you go, well, that's, that's not too bad. I mean, I'm 30 degrees off, I can maneuver uh, onto the runway and that's fine. And a 30 degree maneuvering to a runway to land is, is really no big deal, but it requires a little higher minimums. And the other thing is that re, that can make an approach uh, a category uh, or a circling approach is if the descent gradient is more than 400 feet per nautical mile from the uh, final approach fix to the uh, threshold crossing height. So that'll also put it up there. So offsetting from the runway and a higher than normal descent rate. Now, when I was in pilot training, I mentioned I, I did a video on the T-38 uh, crash we had out at Vance, and it was brought to my attention in the comments section that this was actually from a circling approach, which I had not remembered. Um, and then while I was out at Edwards, there was a T-38 crashed from a circling approach. And just recently, going into Montgomery Field here, a T-38 crashed from a circling approach, and they were both killed. Now, if you look at this, this approach, uh, plate here. I don't know how well you can see it, but um, on uh, the category E, the uh, approach minimums are 860 feet, which puts you 639 feet above the ground. Normally, you're at a 1500 foot pattern altitude, and if you're doing the circling approach at the circling minimums, um, it's a whole different ball game. Now, what the FAA did starting in 2013 was they were saying, hey, we need more protected airspace. Typically for category E aircraft, it's a point four and a half uh, nautical miles off of all the points of all the runways. You, you kind of draw circles and they've increased that uh, now to give more protected airspace. But, um, and it, 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 it uh, on this approach at China Lake, um, category E is now not authorized. I don't have one of the old approach plates, but uh, I th think it was authorized because I don't think we pretended we were doing a circling approach. I think we, we had minimums. 
and I'm giving a check ride uh, to a test pilot. So, you know, this guy's going to be sharp in that. But there's some really insidious and dangerous things that can develop because of the situation with a circling approach. So here we're coming in and we're going to do kind of the extreme example of a circling approach. You're, you're, coming, you're coming into one runway and you're going to circle to the opposite runway. And as you can see for the diagram, uh, you've got various dangers of overshooting uh, if you don't plan it just right. Now, why does this occur? All right, let's talk about aircraft A. Aircraft A is at a normal 1500 foot pattern. And you're looking down over your shoulders, you're coming in, you're looking at your alignment, kind of the depression angle there, and you're going, yeah, this picture looks right. Well, this is what you're used to. You're used to flying the pattern at 1,500 feet. So you come around, you do your 180 degree final turn, you roll up nicely on final, you come in and land. Well, now let's say you're doing a circling approach and you're down at six, 700 feet above the ground, uh, half of the normal altitude you're at. Well, when you're looking, um, off your, uh, in this case, right shoulder, you see the same picture, but because you're so much lower, this same picture is giving you a totally false perception of what you're doing. So you start the turn and you can see from the, uh, the red line there, uh, it's the same distance around, but what happens to people, and this happened to the test pilot that I was giving the check ride, we're coming around and he's looking at this and things are going kind of by a little quicker than you think. And he's almost 90 degrees to the runway, and this isn't looking good. So the tendency is to try to, well, you know, I shoot patterns like this. I know what I'm doing, so I'm tightening it up. You know, I must have overshooting winds or something. So you try to tighten it up, and that's where you get into problems, and that's where you can get into a stall and crash. Now, the interesting thing about the T-38 is in the pattern, you're always flying in Buffett. And for most... uh private pilots, things like that, you got a stall warning horn before you ever hit the buffet. The T-38 does not have a stall warning horn or system as such. You have AOA and you get a, a slow indication and that's telling you got problems. But what really happens is you go from buffeting to increase buffeting and it starts to really bang. You're always flying in buffet, but it starts to get uh, a real intense buffeting. That's mean. That means that you're stalling. You got this uh, highly swept, a symmetrical airfoil, and it's a small wing, and you start to get that hammering, and then the bottom just kind of drops out of you. If you just continue the turn like you would normally continue the turn at the 1500 foot altitude, you'd come out as you see um, way to the uh, the left of the uh, the runway there, and you you wouldn't be able to make the approach. So what you need to do is you need to be aircraft B. Now, <clears throat> you're lower, and when you look at that sight picture, it really looks weird. You really look low. This doesn't look right. Um, and it just, it looks like you're way far, way too far out. And if you're actually shooting this in actual conditions, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not a very nice situation. It's hazy out there. You can't see what you're doing. The picture doesn't look very good. Uh, and, and you look, you, you just don't look right. But you are. So when you come around, you can see that, hey, we're starting to turn here. We're getting the turn rate. Yeah, it's coming around and it looks great. If you started it at point C, which, which looked right, you would vastly overshoot the runway. And of course, the tendency here is to, is to bank it up hard, uh, stall the aircraft and, uh, and crash. And that's, that's typically uh, what is happening to the people flying this. So uh, this is kind of very important to go over, and I was I was glad I did intended to do it with uh, the several of the pilots that I flew with, just so they could see um, this type of approach and and how really difficult it can be. So that's the situation on T thirty eight circling approaches. If you're in an aircraft that, of course, has a much slower approach speed, the whole situation is not as magnified as it is in the case of a very high speed aircraft and you can be in tighter and you can, you can bank it up and you probably won't get into too much trouble, but in a T-38, that's the problem. It's a type of approach people don't typically do. They don't give it much consideration because, uh, it's just something that's not done. And if it comes to a situation where you're flying one, uh, you can get yourself into trouble. So 
that's the story about T-38, still 50 plus years crashing from a type of approach that is a, is not a good approach in the aspects of it. It's got a lot of gotchas. So it's a lesson that unfortunately hasn't been terribly well learned. But thanks for watching.